indirect pupillary light reflex the same up front is the second cranial nerve which is the optic nerve if front there is a third cranial nerve which is the oculomotor nerve and pass light rays with torch in one eye and see pupil reaction in the opposite eye so while you are checking the indirect pupillary light reflex just tell your patient to put the uh, ulnar border of the hand just in front of the nose so that the light rays whatever you are passing in one eye cannot enter into the opposite eye so that is what the method of eliciting the indirect pupillary light reflex so pass light rays with torch in one eye and see pupil reaction in opposite eye so response will be the constriction of pupil in the opposite eye so here we have to see the constriction of pupil in the opposite eye so that is the indirect pupillary light ref light information via optic nerve and optic tract go to the superior colliculi on both sides or the pretractal nucleus from the superior colliculi or pretractal nucleus fibers go to third cranial nerve nuclei which is known as adinger wastefall nucleus from here the fibers go to the ciliary ganglion and from the ciliary ganglion there is a spincher pupillae via the short ciliary nerve and there will be the constriction of the pupil so that is the pathway of direct and indirect light reflex the both the eye will constrict of the pupil so here it is the concept that if we pass the light rays in one eye or both the eye simultaneously there will be the constriction of pupil on the both the sides because optic tract go to the superior colliculi on the both the sides or the pretractal nucleus